All right, folks, welcome back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. I'm your host, Daryl Martin, here on TFNN.com. You can watch us directly right there at Tiger TV. See the charts and the screens with live trader commentary each and every day throughout the day. In addition, uh, check us out live inside the eSignal platform or listen to us on your mobile phone at TFNN.MOBI. All right, well, let's check out where the markets are at right now. We got uh, the indices are moving on up. S&P is positive up 13 and a half points we got the russell up 6.7 nasdaq's up 48 and the dow's up 145 copper is slightly uh negative so going way down there down three percent on the day copper uh like i said down three percent with gold up a mere few points on the day silver is flying as well up over three and a half percent some big moves in our metals markets. Corn, after uh, that massive move yesterday on the AGS reports, uh, is let's see, corn right now is down 10 points. Soybeans is down five, and uh, so still getting some good moves, but big moves there, right there in corn. Pound dollar is currently down 11 pips. The euro dollar is down 49 pips. The euro pound is down 32. Dollar freight currently up 44 pips. Uh, we got the dollar yen over in our FX markets here down 36. Euro yen moving big, down 99 pips on the day. Aussie yen is currently down 28. Aussie dollar up five. And let's see here, we got the bonds markets are slightly negative. The dollar index, king dollar, deciding to push up a little bit on the day. Oil is down 64 cents on the day and pound yen down 68 cents. Get to your lunchtime market wrap and uh, review there. Um, looking on over, we got some uh, big moves. Uh, we got the euro yen is moving on down to uh, doing some of the you know headlines of the day. Euro yen moving down to its October lows and uh, going on down there. And let's see here, what else do we got? We got Bitcoin plunging. So uh, the key technical levels. So, uh, you know, I don't really track Bitcoin that much myself. I know some do, but it's dropping on down. It's like literally way down, dropping below 225 after breaking a key level. And it went down, 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 bam, flying on down there. It's plunging down. Don't forget, uh, if you are into Bitcoin, then you can um, have access to trading it in a little simpler way over on the Nadex platform. And um, so you may want to check that out if you're a Bitcoin trader because they have access to the Bitcoin binary contracts. And uh, with the volatility on Bitcoin, there could be some possibilities there. It's a little bit harder to chart. I mean, you got to you know check out some of the different exchanges. Terra Exchange is what the uh, index is based on on um, Nadex. And um, it's an institutional um, Bitcoin index. So you're probably not going to have access to the Terra Exchange itself. They develop an index based on multiple exchanges. So that way uh, the price cannot be easily manipulated. That's why it's used as a settlement index. And uh, But anyway, so just in case you didn't know that uh, they launched those out last, uh, I want to say last month either November or December last year, year there. Um, so we got corporate earnings season is kicking off. So uh, if you haven't got that stuff up on your calendar ready to go, understand we got corporate earnings season is in gear and uh, starting to launch out. We're going to be uh, getting some nice moves, hopefully, on the markets just based on that alone and uh, can bring a volatility in the mornings, in the evenings, because they come out at all different times of day. We'll go over some of those important earnings releases that are coming out here in just a little bit. But uh, don't forget, earnings season is here. So make sure you do check uh, those important earnings announcements uh, that have heavy impacts if you're trading indices, whether you're trading futures, ETFs, options, binaries, spreads, you know, any of the above. You do want to be aware of the earnings that are coming out. Um, let me see here what we got on the calendar for today. We had job openings, not too many earnings yet up, but they are coming. So lots of earnings releases right around the corner. We do have some tomorrow in the morning. Um, let's see here. We got JP Morgan, Chase. So uh, kicking off earnings season here for us. And that'll come out, uh, usually comes out around 7, 10 in the morning, the wire. So that is the scheduled release time right now. It's like we got on the clock. So for tomorrow, JP Morgan coming out first thing in the morning be sort of a pre-look into everything and may give the markets a little bit of a mood. So just be aware of it, and um, that'll impact the Dow. 
uh, more heavily than anything there. Um, but uh, just overall, the you know, financial sector. Okay. Um, let's see here. Going in, looking at what else is going on. The stock, the uh, market has rallied after those big drops that it had. This is actually pretty common. Um, right before earnings, what comes in, mutual fund managers, you know, as long as they perform right about where the market's performing, is okay. But if the market rallies and they miss out, that is not good. Market goes down, mutual fund goes down, mutual fund manager gets to keep his job. Isn't that nice, right? But if the market goes up and the mutual fund doesn't go up, usually that mutual fund manager doesn't get to keep his job so easily. So they load up on those stocks right into earnings. Okay? So. Uh, just be aware that that is off, this, we often see this rally coming in, going into um, when the earnings season starts kicking off. And we're going to get a lot more earnings next week. So we're going to have, let's see here, we got Johnson & Johnson coming out. We have IBM coming out. We got United Technologies, Verizon, General Electric, McDonald's, you know, uh, Google, Visa. Uh, these are just in that couple weeks here. Um, let's see. Chevron, Amazon, Qualcomm, Facebook, Boeing, Comcast, Procter & Gamble, Pfizer, AT&T, Apple, Microsoft. So we got a whole list of uh, big name companies that are going to be moving the indices coming out. And those funds don't want to miss out on those big moves. Um, let's see here. So that uh, basically just gives you just an idea, something you need to be aware of every time that the earnings season comes around each quarter. Expect like a couple days right before that earnings season starts to kick off there to see a pop in the market. Okay? And uh, doesn't mean you trade it directly as that, but don't be surprised if it has that. And you may even go in with a little bit of a you know bullish bias in that sense of expecting the mutual fund managers to start loading up to be in those. And sometimes you'll see a drop off before it and then a pop. So, uh, but usually, I mean, overall, we do actually get to see that nice big pop up in the market on it. Um, let's see here what else we have. I'm trying to go through a few more things for you. But, you know, yeah, we've seen, you know, just move up, move up, move up, you know, and hopefully we'll see a continued rise. We had that decline and then things moving on up today for us. And I wouldn't be surprised to see them to keep going as long as, uh, you know, obviously earnings come out positively. Uh, should, you know, retail stores, that's going to be the big thing. And you know, how well did they do? How well did retail sales do? That will, of course, affect well, retail sales, will affect electronics, et cetera, you know, the things that are impacted by that. And, um, okay. Let's see. Uh, what else do we have? I can stop and talk to you, man. I don't know what you want me to do. Uh, stock market update. Home builders uh, slip coming on out. We got the European stocks face a declining QE moment tomorrow and finish with decent uh, gains today. So let's see. They're uh, moving on up with their uh, – they have that big QE moment coming out. Let's see. Let's pull that article up. We'll talk about that a little bit over here on Forex Live as well. And it's a good article. But basically talking about stocks finishing positive on the day, just coming out, FTSE closing up, the CSC falls, Germany closing up, Italy, Spain, all positive European bond yields flat in Spain, Italy, Germany, Portugal, Portugal gaining, you know, Greece falling, but that's no surprise. Um, so, and they're just a reminder that we're getting an announcement from the EU Court of Justice on the ECB on program tomorrow morning around 830. So uh, that is likely to be a big risk event. So uh, just want to be aware of that one. So it's a good one to stick on your calendar right there, okay? Uh, 8.30 a.m. GMT. Uh, so, but we will want to have that on our news calendar for tomorrow, okay? Um, let's see here. Would be 3.30. So 8.30 would be 3.30 Eastern time, okay? Um, but anyway, so the announcement from the EU Court of Justice is going to go in. They're going to talk about the QE, trying to clear um, obstacles, uh, holding back, you know, the QE decisions that they can make, the legalities of sovereign bonds in Europe and dating other countries, et cetera, et cetera. So with all that in mind, just, uh, you know, be aware of that announcement. I guess it's sort of an odd time for it to come out. But uh, 2.30, let's see if that's right. 
Oh, wait a minute. Well, 8.30... Oh, 3.30 a.m. I'm like, 8.30? That didn't make any sense that we have a 3.30 p.m. announcement from Europe. 3.30 a.m. is when we're looking for that announcement to come on out, okay? So 3.30 a.m. is when the announcement's coming out. Um, just be aware if you're holding positions overnight, how that could impact you. If you're doing um, anything else, you know, like let's say you're doing iron butterflies, iron condors, things of that sort, that's an announcement that could impact you that you'd want to have on your list, okay? Um, let's see here. All right, well, let me hold on because a radio operator wants me to do something and I don't know what it is. So, trying to get back on track on the show. Um, oil is near a six-year low. Um, Grant, uh, blue, uh, blue, Grant, Brent, U.S. crude oil, um, uh, reaching briefly reaching parity. So basically, on a par, same price as crude oil. So there's the massive move there, bringing those back down on the spread between Brent and WTI coming on together. So on the prices, usually there is a pretty decent gap, a spread between the two of them. Um, let's see here. We did get a six-year low on the Brent on crude, but like I said, the parity thing going on, investors uh, going on on gold and short on copper. Uh, and, you know, there's gold, but silver. I mean, they're piling in on silver as well. Uh, I mean, G, you know, we see gold up a couple points. We see silver up, I mean, 0. 0.581. That's a 3.5% move. Copper down 3%. So, like I said, it's some massive, massive moves right there over in our metals markets that uh, you'll want to, you know, I mean, just, you know, keep your eye on and be aware of where the action's happening. I mean, you know, gold's back, gold's going up, man. It's been bouncing, it's been doing pretty good. But I mean, silver's got, I mean, it's just outpowering the thing. And copper, we'll talk about how you can trade copper when we get back in a little bit less scary way. Because it's a fun but scary thing to ride. I'll tell you how to reduce that risk a little bit. Be back right after this break. Uh, Folks, so going back here to the diagnostic trading hours had a nice move during the break there. Markets uh, lighten up red, 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 red across the board. And um, I mean, FX and indices both getting some nice big moves. So uh, great for you five and 20 minute binary traders out there, futures traders doing some scalps, pulling on down. Looks like they're still pushing down. We'll see if they uh, build some cause or if they just uh, bounce right off of it. But uh, yeah, you got to love the movement. And I'm um, just waiting to see if we can get another oomph in there or if that was it. So right here about this time. But uh, so far, I mean, I'm still seeing some, you know, some ticking volume off and on. It's, just, it's slowed down. The volume has definitely slowed down from where it was. So, um, all right. So that uh, catches us up overall on those markets right there. And now let me go ahead and pull up the crop reports. Um, over here, let's see. What's what's the matter? Oh, and uh, all right. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the news trades for yesterday, today, and what's coming up this week. Uh, one of the big things was the uh, you know the crop reports coming out, and so I'll put that up here on the screen for you. There you go. Um, so on the wage to end reports on crops, uh, obviously massive impact there on cotton and soybeans and everything else. Uh, I'll go ahead and show those reports to you. I'm uh, just waiting on uh, them to actually show up on the screen on your side so you can see them and uh, show you where to get access to those reports. Let's see, they're not showing up quite yet. Let's see here. One second. I don't know why. Um, all right. Well, uh, it's USDA.gov forward slash OCE forward slash commodity forward slash wage. All right. There it goes. Okay. It's showing now. Awesome. I don't know why it wasn't showing. All right. Um, anyway, so pulling this up for you, looking at it. Uh, this is where you can find the reports over here on the USDA website. Okay. And this is, you know, it gives you the date so you can know when they're going to happen in advance. 
Okay, at noon, right there. So at noon Eastern time, January 12th, February 10th, March 10th, April 9th. If you're trading soybeans, you're trading corn, you're trading wheat, you're trading sugar, things like that, you'll want to know the ag supply and demand. Now, whether or not you're all into the report, this may be you want to know the day that you want to avoid trading ags. Man, there it goes again. We got another leg coming down in the uh, the indices, by the way. Uh, anyway, so you want to know when those reports are coming out, see the massive impact on those reports, and that's where you get it, USDA. So just know the schedule, know when it's coming up. Uh, and then you also have the, not just that report, but also going on in, um, then we get, there's there's also the agricultural statistics reports, but there's the annual report. And this is really the big one that you want to be aware of. And so you want to have this one on your calendar each year, okay? So, and I did set for January 1st, go check over on the USDA's website, find out, you know, they listed over on Cornell, they put all the statistics for you. But find out when that report's going to be, because that's usually the big ag move day, okay? And so let's take a look at some of those ag moves. And I'll pull up corn and soybeans. We'll look at them from yesterday on the release. But with that report only comes out once a year. So I was trading soybeans and corn yesterday. It went rather well. And um, But I was trading them over on you know Nadex because you get a little scary to trade things like copper. I was talking about that earlier. Um, Soybeans, corn, especially corn and the copper. I mean, they can just, they can pop around and just, you know, kick you around with by a tick or two. So it, to me, it's almost not even worth trading them on as much as I love trading them on futures, but futures by themselves, not so much. Uh, because just, I mean, it's, it's amazing how you can see it move like 10 ticks, like boom, boom, in a heartbeat. It's like they're just like, oh, let's see if there's any stops and then go back up here. And uh, you can really just get hammered on them. And so I like using like the spreads or the binary contract to place, uh, you know, my trades whenever I'm trading on these. Or if I'm going to trade the futures, I'll trade, I'll use the spreads as a, basically, you know, put, like, I'll sell a lower spread that's the same essence, literally the same formula it's using a Black Shows model as buying a put. So, um, but you can go in there and you can, you know, you can ratio them out and everything else. But you can actually just go and get a hedge on your futures contract by using the spreads. We'll pull up those ag reports when we get back from this break and we'll be all set and keep going. All right, stay right there. All right, folks, we're back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And just looking through a few different markets with you. We're going through, I was just talking about how you have the ability to go in and, uh, look at the you know the commodities and like corn soybeans stuff like that and be able to check those contracts out and uh you can trade them over there and i was gonna pull up one of my charts on here and just uh, go over it with you and uh but corn and soybeans are having a little bit of issue i'll just go ahead and open them over here in one second we'll bring it up I can make this thing maximize. There we go. All right. So just looking at uh, corn really yesterday is what I wanted to go through. Bring that on up there. And you can see the massive volatility that happens when this release comes out. All right here. Okay, let's see what kind of movement we get there. We got to move from 380. Well, basically, we'll just round it, make it 390 on up to 407. So 27 point move flies up, comes back down. But uh, I mean, it was up, down, up. So I mean, you could have went in with a variety of strategies. I'm usually hopping in direction. It pops up, pulls back down. Often I'll see it pull back up. And I can go in, I can grab some of that. On the way back there, we're seeing it pull back down really hard today, coming back actually breaking the low of uh, yesterday's uh, previous ag report. And uh, But it's just knowing when that report's coming up, because I don't care if you're long or short. If you're trading futures, you got, I mean, unless you're insane, you got a stop and it got hit. So that's why I like trading something that I don't have to worry about a stop on whenever I'm going to go in and trade on these ag reports. Uh, we can go over here and look at soybeans as well. And... 
you just find those massive moves right there. So, I mean, right up there, up to 1061, down to 1026. So, I mean, about 40 points of movement, just up, down, and that's literally in just a matter of less than five minutes that movement took place. And on this one, the market didn't even give us a chance to pull back and get back in. This flew down, went straight down, and continued on down um, today on the ads right there. But soybeans, you know, fun to trade. Uh, corn, a little difficult to trade futures on unless you're hedging um, or you're trading longer term on those um, ag markets. And then, um, but as far as day trading corn, it's pretty tough. Just you'll know if you try it. Um, <laughs> and, you know, copper can uh, also be the same way. And these moves, as small as they look, uh, are not small. So uh, if we zoom, we'll zoom out a little bit, make it look a little bit bigger. But uh, a lot of these moves, you know, they are actually happening, of course, you know, in the evenings uh, from some of the European announcements. Let's go ahead and let's look at that. Let's turn that on. And let's see, where is that setting? Under settings, there we go. And then we go to futures. We can say show extended session and highlight it. Okay. And now we'll be able to see the nighttime movement as well. And we can see we got, of course, a lot of that copper movement happening early in the evening um, on copper. It's already closed back down again in the pits. Pits have a pretty short session overall. But um, lots of, you know, copper starting off early. Get some big, big moves right in there. But again, those contracts are available to trade. Um, on Nadex, on copper, actually, pretty early. Corn and soybeans, you have to wait until they open on up. But copper does start at 6. And then, of course, at 8, it starts having contracts every, you know, two hours as well. Um but you know, if you want to trade those markets or if you have traded those markets and you're looking for a way to hedge your trades, protect your trades, that is a way to do it. Uh, to give you an update real quick, uh, there's just been some massive movement. You know, we've been talking about that. I was talking about, hey, they're, you know, they're still going, going, going. And I'm still seeing negative volume coming in. Uh, we got S&P is down two points now. Everything's starting off positive earlier in the day. Russell is down two. Nasdaq down four or up fourteen only now. Dow's only up twelve now. So, and I've been watching the FX charts just drop, 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 drop. So, um, really interesting. So it's just uh, you know any kind of announcements and things. I'm sure there's something headlining somewhere. Uh, but you know once you find it, it doesn't matter. The moves already happened, right? So um we had we had an auction result the uh, auction results came out so unless those came out worse than expected but let's see what how they come out u.s treasury auction results have to go in and dive into that just be curious if maybe they expected more on it uh people put it 54 they bought 21 billion um and the rates, the high yield on the rate was 1.93. So interest rate ranging from two to a uh, quarter percent. And that's what came out 35 minutes ago when a lot of this uh, action started up. So that could have something to do with it. And again, that's, you know, that's one of the things about news. Like it's, it's cool to go back and look and go, hey, that's what impacted that. But you're not like, when there is news that you can be aware of, know about it. And we, we, knew, we knew the 10 year bond auction was coming out at 101, you know. Um, and the results will be coming out at that time. But, you know, things like that, I mean, there's only so much you can know. The big thing is you got to follow the charts. you got to have your risk management in check. And as we see all these indices flying, then, I mean, you watch the volume, you watch the trend, you go with the chart. I mean, it's, don't try to, I, and what I'm trying to say is be aware of the news. Tr you know, you can make a plan to trade the news. And you, if you're doing that, you want to have your risk management in check. No matter what, be aware of it. So that way it doesn't get you caught off guard. But don't try to figure out why every move's happening when it's happening. Like, you can always go back and look at, hey, what happened? What can I learn from that at the end of the day? What, what was unique about today that I might be able to actually use tomorrow? But don't get so caught up in it that you're like, okay, I got to learn every news report before it happens. I got to see what's happening. You know, it's like, no, you need to follow the chart. Um, you know, we got movement on oil right now. I see negative volume on Russell right now. So lots of, lots of good movements going on. Um, oil down now 90 cents, down 2% on the day. Uh, all right, so coming back on over, uh, trying to get through some of those ag reports. We basically covered that. I mean, when the ag reports come out, I showed you where to get them over on the USDA's website. Of course, I'll cover them in future shows as well for you. Uh, but uh, one of those things, always get that annual report on there. Big moves. You, I mean, if you can get an incredible amount of premium, you can do neutral trades because a lot of times they'll pop up and come back. 
if uh, you know, it's not too expensive, you can do straddles. You can do strangles. You can even trade a direction. Like it pops up, comes back, and then a lot of times I'll see it retrace. Like I showed you on corn there. Um, so you got strangles, you got straddles, you got iron condors, you got iron butterflies. What are and then you got directional? Directional is pretty easy. Buy or sell. What's a strangle? A strangle on a binary is where you buy a binary above and sell a binary below. So if it goes far enough up or down, you actually could profit on the trade. Uh, but what's a straddle? It's where you buy a spread, sort of like buying a call and, you know, buying a put or selling a spread would be the same as buying a put. So as long as it moves far enough up or down, then you can profit on the trade. Um, and let's see here. Um, then we got, what about neutral trades? Well, neutral trades would be like an iron condor or an iron butterfly. Iron condors where you buy the lower spread, you sell the upper spread. And so, you know, looking at that, you know, corn chart or soybean chart, if I bring that back up for you, you see all that movement, you know, depending upon, you know, where, how you decided to trade it. So you got natural gas over there, bring this one, oh, we got copper up. But, uh, there we go. So get this massive move. Well, if you're doing a straddle and you bought a contract up here, let's say at 1060 and sold one down here at 1030, and it flew down, then you'd be, you could be profitable on the trade. Uh, and if you bought a binary above, sold a binary below, or bought a spread above, sold a spread below, like that's directional. Neutral would be you want to stay in it. So like in this instance, probably wouldn't have worked as well on neutral because the thing kept going. Now the binary would have, you know, hit you a little bit more. The uh, spread would have had a you probably a minor loss on it based on your premium that you had in the trade. Uh, corn though, I mean, it flew up, flew down the, What's going to happen is over if you had, say, an 11 o'clock contract, if that came out with our 12 o'clock coming, then let's say you went under 1 o'clock. So we go over here, go to 12 central. Uh, you would have finished some, you know, you may have finished inside the range if there was enough premium. So if it finished right in there, and it's always people are like, which one do I do? Which one's the best one? Well, what's the price like? You know, it's like trying to tell, like, is the pitcher going to throw a fastball or a curveball? I have no idea. I got to see what the ball is coming at me and then just be ready to swing. So you have to look at what the contracts are, what the pricing is, and um, then at that point, make the determination, is a straddle better, a strangle better, iron butterfly better, iron condor better, or sit out on it, or go directional on it, or hedge a future or fork contract directionally, um, but use the spread to help hedge it out. So there's multiple ways you can play, just what's coming at you, what's available when it comes up, okay? Um, so speaking of strangles, we talked about these quite a bit on the 20-minute uh, contracts, and uh, I, I love trading the strangles on the 20-minute contracts if the price is right. If I can get about a $15 buy and a $50, you know, $85 sell, about 30 bucks, and I have volume exceeding expectations, and that's a big piece for me, okay? I really want that volume exceeding expectations. If I can get that combination, then... Um, you know, I'm a big fan of doing the strangles over on the 20 minute contracts, uh, because a lot of times what you'll see is, you know, if you do them over the course of an hour, sometimes it just takes too long. They move up, they move back down. They're more expensive. So I can find that I, I have a little better probability of getting them a little bit cheaper, um, by doing this. And I'll just go in and look at 20 minute ranges on a chart. And I'll look at the, you know, the 20 minute expectations of movement and then expectations of volume and see where we are on that. And I'll have to pull one of those up. Maybe we'll uh, do that on Thursday's show. We'll dive a little bit into the 20 minute contracts for you in more detail. But if volume is exceeding expectations, then it'll probably move further than it normally moves. And if the pricing is not built in, because it's, again, volume exceeding expectations, then a lot of times that price is not built in. That's where you get your edge. That's where you get that cheap strangle. And that's where you can hop in and look at a potentially good trade set up um, and the volume is not exceeding expectations a lot of times that's where you can look at butterflies if maybe there's more volume like in the morning you don't have any volume like i say it's just a low uh, which is rare but let's say in the morning hours volume is way under expectations well obviously they expect a lot of movement so the binary can be overpriced and that's where you can pull off a neutral trade in the afternoon they don't expect movement but volume is exceeding expectations binaries are underpriced that's where you take advantage of the strangles um so we can uh, go into that even in more detail. We, you can even do the same thing, strangles on earnings, you know, maybe go in and you know, do a strangle on NASDAQ uh, before the Google earnings report uh, because the report comes out at like 3.01 and uh, like, or three, like 
what is it? Four okay, it's Eastern time, 4 p.m. in like one second usually they release it within that and like a minute. And we have to till 4.15, even though the press conference is not till later, the wire release comes out then. So that can make a large move happen on NASDAQ. Um, again, you straddle strangled. If the IV is just through the roof, you could check out potentially, you know, doing butterflies if you're getting enough to make it worth it. Um, but implied volatility will make things a lot more expensive. And so if it's really expensive, they have to be really wide. And so that's where you got to make that choice. Which way do you want to go on that? Um, if the price is good for you and you like it, then we'll, I'm going to walk through as uh, that comes up here in the coming weeks. I'll walk through the Google trade with you. As just a, it's just a good example. Um, but you can't really rely upon people with forecasts made by the news. That's why we like to go both directions on trades or go neutral on trades. Uh, looking at the uh, news calendar, making sure we get you caught up on that. Don't leave you hanging there. I want to make sure you have those ready for you. We talked about the ag reports a little bit. But going into a couple other ones, just pulling up the uh, news calendar for you over here. And talking to you about a few expectations here over the next couple of days for you to be uh, looking at in between shows. And there we go. Okay, so today is the 13th. We had our jolts and bond auction. We had our weekly or weather and crop bulletin coming out later after that comes out pretty much almost every day. Um, we have your industrial production coming up tonight. So that is the trade on the list for tonight. Uh, the report's going to come out at 5 a.m. We're going to be looking at 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. Okay, so you're getting at 11 p.m. for a 7 a.m. expiration. We're going to see if we can pull off an iron condor that's buying the lower spread and selling the upper spread on Nadex, North American Derivative Exchange up in Chicago there. I uh, mean, click on the Nadex banner on the right side of the TFN homepage, and uh, the little Nadex banner, you click on that, and you can get a demo account set up and start these things out. But your industrial production report coming out at 5 a.m., User stays within less than a 35 pip range of movement. If we get at least 35 pips on the trade, then um, that sets us up for a high probability iron condor trade. To be able to collect premium wallet, wobbles around a little bit. If it moves like say 15 ticks by the end of it, we collect $20 on the trade. Um, I'm gonna get a minimum profit of 35 bucks, uh, meaning adding the two max profits of both sides together. Those maxes should be no less than 35. Uh, some things coming up tomorrow. We got the European uh, Court of Justice coming out. Looks like, uh, like I said, updated time for you, 3.30 a.m. We'll have to get that updated. And uh, so we'll send that over to get that done. But, and uh, again, so 3.30 a.m. is when that uh, time is supposed to come out. Um, also, we'll have the 10-year bond auction, um, Germany 10-year bond auction coming out. Earnings release coming out tomorrow morning. Like I said, uh, I talked about this a little bit earlier. Uh, JP Morgan. Wrap up a few more of the news events for the week. So you ready for those when we get back? Stay right there. Markets are getting hammered. They're getting slammed right now. So uh, we've been calling the negative volume, negative volume, negative volume. And now we're down 86 points on the Dow, 17 on NASDAQ, 9 on the Russell, and 14 on the S&P. So it keeps coming on down and uh, flying down. Got some good calls over there in the den as well. So great job. Uh, pulling up, wrapping up, just getting this news time report out for you real quick. And... Seeing where it's all going. Okay, so we got uh, tonight's report done. We talked about European. We talked about the bonds. Boom, boom. Oil inventory is tomorrow. Do not forget, oil inventory is tomorrow at 1030. Uh, going over here, um, be careful on those spike structures on oil. They've been pretty tough lately. You may want to uh, back off on those right now. That's the way oil's trading. So I might want to, I might take that off the plan for the moment. Uh, and then uh, Aussie employment change tomorrow night. Aussie employment change coming on out and unemployment rate news is coming out um, at 7.30. So uh, tomorrow evening, look for an iron condor, look for a $30 minimum profit on that. And then to make sure you're taken care of on Thursday morning before the show comes back around, we got the various solar reports, PPI, core PPI, and the Empire State Manufacturing Index will be released at 8.30 on Thursday morning. Looking for an iron condor on the euro dollar of 25 bucks. Uh, we'll have unemployment claims come out at 8.30 as well. Be aware of that. Usually not a massive market mover unless they're significantly off of expectations. Um, going on into the Philly Fed Manufacturing Index, that'll be released at 10 a.m. So we'll be looking for a 9 a.m. entry on an 11 a.m. expiration for a $25 minimum profit on the euro dollar to trade uh, basically neutral expected movement on the euro dollar during the U.S. Philly Fed Index. 
Uh, we'll have natural gas inventory coming on out. And then that evening on Thursday, Intel will be releasing its um, earnings at 415. No real way to trade those on Nadex unless you're using weeklies. Not really going to help you a lot. It's going to move too slow. I mean, I guess they're not horrible because they're next Friday. It's the following Friday, but well, you're going to have a full 20-something hours in there um, of premium. So probably not going to be the best way to try to pull that off. But just be aware it's happening um, if you're carrying positions over. You know, you're trading the futures or obviously if you're trading Intel. Um, and, of course, any you know associated companies that that can spill over its impact on. Uh, then tomorrow night we'll have Frank, or Thursday night we'll have Frank Retail Sales at 315. We'll be looking for a 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. Iron Condor on that contract. 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. We'll have Euro Final CPI for a $35 uh, Iron Condor on that. Again, 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. on the Euro dollar. And Friday we'll be wrapping up with a 830 Euro CPI um, on the U.S. CPI and Core CPI using the Euro dollar for a $30 minimum profit, um, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Not too much more. Um, I guess there's one other potential trade there on Friday, and that's the U.S. capacity utilization rate and industrial production news. Again, usually pretty flat, and it's on Friday, entering at 9 o'clock for an 11 a.m. expiration. Release comes out at 9.15. Okay? So that really wraps up your weekly news report. Like I said, we've been getting some uh, killer moves over here on the indices. I hope you've been able to take advantage of some of those. And um, they've just been flying for us. Uh, and let's see here. I mean, just straight down. Let me pull up a chart. We'll wrap up with this right here before the show rolls on off. But uh, so right here we got the S&P. And I mean, just, you know, we were slightly positive and, uh, on a couple of the indices, slightly negative on a couple of the indices. And then we just got this nice big downdraft. Uh, I mean, massive downdraft here on the day here, just a matter of an hour or so, and flying down. Uh, we go over here, look over here at the NASDAQ, and uh, you see how it was positive, lost all those gains. Russell positive, lost everything. And uh, Dow, you know, same story. So anyways, lots of volatility. That's what we want. Bring on the volatility. The more of it, the better. All right, stay tuned. We have another great show coming up for you right after this.